Hi everybody, it's Oni. Welcome to part 3 of What If Deku Met Luna Early. You guys managed to get to the 30 likes in the span of about 6 to about 12 hours, which is mental. And if you guys want to see the last and final part of this series, get us to around about 60 likes in 24 hours, and you guys can get the next part out as soon as possible. But if you don't get the part as soon as possible, the movie will be created. That's if you guys don't get the milestone or not. I do hope you all enjoy this video, and hope you all enjoy it. Well then, we're going to continue a couple of days after when we last ended. Well, it's actually been three days since I last recorded, but Ayo, hey, what are you going to do? As Izuku and, well, Luna were both in the human world on their date, on their third one in the past two days. Luna, do you think we should uh, go see another movie? Or should we go back to home and have some fun, Izuku said. Fun in the what way, the uh, mating kind or board games, she said. Maybe a bit of both, Isuku said, whispering all the confidence into his ear, or her ear. As Izuku came back a couple hours later with Luna, Blitzo was standing there with Stolas and Inko, with both of their arms crossed, like both of them explaining to them why were they late, where were they, and why do they look more attached than usual? As Izuku tried to explain to them, but Lunar interjected. Why would you want to know, Dad? Uh, I think. It's none of your business either way. The only person who belongs to uh, who knows about this should be Auntie uh, Mother Inko. Lunar, in Lunar corrected herself. As Izuku stood there and blushed slightly under his eyes. As his eyes shaded his hair. Oh, his hair shaded his eyes. Izuku enjoyed his all his time being with Luna. Not a single dull moment with her, and it was brilliant. The job that Izuku was with, it was beautiful. We had to spend all waking day with each other. It was more than bliss, it was pure ecstasy. As Izuku and Luna both ran upstairs, as Blitzo and Stolas both looked at Inko in anger. You're not going to say anything? Stolas said. Now why should I? They're both okay. They're both not injured. If they came back an hour late, which they didn't, they only about two minutes behind. If they managed to actually were late, well then, we're going to have to uh, pull out the weapon, Inko said. What weapon? This, as Inko pulled out a massive machete from her hands. For all from generally no way. <laughs> if they were late, their hands would be chopped off, Inko said. Damn, Inko, Stolas said. I didn't think you'd be that type of woman to uh, chop someone's hands off if they were late. Well, you can heal them, can't you? You can sew them back on? You can regenerate them? Well, yes, we can. Well, there's no problems with that, is there? Inko said as she maniacally laughed. I think we're bad influence, Blitzo said. You think? She wasn't like this when she came in. She was innocent and pure. Now she's evil, Stolas said. As he looked down to his hands, knowing that he created a monster in the disguise of a pure innocent woman. As Izuku and Luna time skipped over their fun because I'm not saying that I'm risking demonetization. Are you dumb? There's a quite big chance YouTube might take down this video if I explain that. So if you want to explain something like that, there'll be a what what pad video linked in the description you can actually go read. That'll probably explain it better. As Izuku and Luna both had their fun night, Izuku and Luna both woke up the next day to Blitzer running into the room, explaining to them what they did a couple of days ago was brutally on the Hero Commission, as heroes are now getting fully investigated into what they've been doing behind the scenes, like what Mount Lady did with a bunch of those, uh, you know, part two at the end. As Izuku and Luna both came downstairs to see on the TV, Endeavor, Hawks, Best Genist, and a bunch of others like Overflow were both arrested under the pictures of child abuse, murder, and including other charges. As Izuku smiled, knowing that their commission will be down soon and All Might will be on top, I mean on top, as the only purest hero left. But Blitzo had, did have his suspicions, so he did want to have a look into that, into the near future, which he would.
very soon. As Izuku and Luna both cuddled, knowing that what they did was right and wrong at the same time, because the villains will be on the rise, but they can deal with that as they please. As Stolas walked off with Blitzo in a hurry, as their next job would arrive a couple of days later after Blitzo's information came back. Okay, All Might's clean and all these heroes are clean, but there is a couple of things we do need to do, like those League of Villains that have been rising recently from nowhere. Well, they have been a slight problem for us. Well, we haven't been able to track them down in a while, and their boss, on the other hand, well, he's a slippery bastard, Blitzo said. If I went against him, I would probably lose, but he's not in his prime anymore, which is really good. But, on the other hand, if everything does go flop shit crazy, we're gonna have to get stalless and get ready for an all-out war with the humans. And if that happens, God's gonna have to get involved, and when God get involved, another holy war might happen, Blitzo said. So it's either we kill them now and get it over with, or we um, deal with it in the future. As for right now, our main protagonist, well, not protagonist of this thing, well, I'm not about the other thing. Our main objective right now is to try and figure out why your way is being attacked so often is what it is. Once we figure that out, we should be able to understand how many people are getting attacked and why. Stolas said. So from now on, you both will enroll as students of UA for around about until you meet the League of Villains. Once you've done that, we should be able to understand why they're going after UA as often as what they are. Stolas said. As Izuku and Luna had a bright smile on their face, knowing that they're going to a hero school to meet friends and everything. But there is a downside to this, Stolas said. You must make sure you stay incognito. If they realize that you're from hell and you are only there to manipulate and try to make sure whoever is getting attacked gets killed on the spot or gets kidnapped or uh, thrown away or gets kept alive for a period of time. Once they figure that out, you have to get armed immediately, Stolas said. As Izuku and Luna nodded as they both headed out to pack and get ready to go back to the human world. As Izuku and Luna packed and ready up, Stolas read off the book and wishing them both good luck in the human world. And Zinko wanted to go with them as a guardian, but she knew she had to stay there to manage the rest of the jobs that had to be done. As Stolas said his goodbyes to his daughter to be, as the portal closed, as Izuku and Luna both arrived at Inko's apartment building, the one that Izuku grew up in, the one he knew the most of. As Izuku and Luna both walked through the door to be greeted with the smell of feminality. Feminality? That's not the word, is it? It's when you actually feel the same feeling that you felt before. Feminality, I can't say it. As Izuku and Luna both arrived in, and sat down to be greeted with 25 emails, oh not emails, mail on the floor as Izuku baked it up to realize their apartment bills were due. Blitzo, you bastard! Izuku said as Luna went up to him to see 500 yen was owed to this apartment building or they will be foreclosing it as Izuku and Luna would be kicked out of the building. As Izuku thought this was a joke at first, until they saw the stamp, and that was the stamp of the owners. As Izuku thought shit. As this was the only way out, Izuku thought, let's go murder a rich guy and steal his wealth, Izuku said. As Izuku grabbed his gun, as Luna pulled him back, do you think there's a better way? Kill the apartment owner, she said. Smirking as Izuku and her both went downstairs with a dual bow shotgun hidden from view as Izuku pulled it out the moment he reached the bottom floor as he bashed in and shot the guy dead as Izuku and Luna went back upstairs to not to worry about what the repercussions of this was 
as five days later, they both were arriving at Yue to meet the principal. As Izuku and Nezu, well, Izuku and Luna both arrived at Nezu's office. Five minutes later, Nezu had two knocks at the door. As Nezu walked in to greet the two Midorias, that is written on their piece of paper, of course. So you two are the transfer students for this year, huh? Nezu said. Yes, we are. Izuku said and Luna in tandem. So, what is your quirks? Because on here it says that you have a tandem of them. Izuku's quirk is around about, based around superhuman agility to superhuman feats. As for Luna, it's obvious by your animal features. As for Izuku, what class will you be based in this year? It said on my sheet, class 1A, sir, Izuku said. Very nice. Can you just answer me this one question and we'll get all your stuff sorted? Where are you originally from? Nezu said, with a hint of questioning. Well, we're from Bulbaria. It's a very... Well, I originally rated from here, but me and Luna both moved with our parents at a young age to go to Latveria. Izuku said, blatantly lying. As Luna backed up Izuku's claim on this matter. As Nezu verified their sheets, as that was all said and done, Izuku and Luna both arrived to their first class of the day. As they knocked at the door, as Aizawa told them to come in, expecting transfer students. Who is it? Aizawa said. Any, oh yeah, before that of course. Introduce yourselves to the class, Aizawa said tiredly. Yes, sir, Izuku said, as he pulled out a piece of paper showing his name and how it is spelt. Hi, my name is Izuku Midoriya, and it's very nice to meet you, Izuku said, smiling. My hobbies include eating katsudan and chilling with my girlfriend Luna, Izuku said, as Luna walked up to the stage this time, introduced herself, but instead of saying Luna, it's Izuku this time. As the girls in the class both, well, went hagao mode and went over to Luna and petted her head, seeing that she had dog-like features on that of a wolf. Mina couldn't get enough and just started petting her tail as Luna got visually frustrated as she hid behind Izuku, not wanting to be, well, mauled half to death. As Aizawa looked at the rest of his class, and showed them a very menacing glare. If you don't leave her alone, I'll expel one of you, as Aizawa said. As they all rushed back to their seats, scared of what Aizawa's wrath in terms. As Izuku, two minutes later, sat down at his seat. The one from Canon, of course. Let's just say Mineta's not here, for the exact reason there's more room. As Izuku and Luna both sat next to each other. Let's just say, as their hands were intertwined, you may be wondering, how are they going to write? How will they do this, this, and that? Well, my friends, this is where Anadestriax come in. Izuku and Luna both know, being a gun market, and uh, being an assassin requires multiple skills, including Anadestriax, just in case one of your hands go from holding the gun, of course. As Izuku and Luna both were enjoying their classes until All Might rushed in with a menacing, well, smile as he said to his class, Don't worry, I am here, coming through the door like a normal person. As Aizawa facepalmed at All Might's creativity, All Might, you've done that twice now. I think it's pretty obvious that you kind of need to be more original, Aizawa said. But being original, it's not my thing. I just do my own thing, he All Might said. As All Might looked through the class. Hey, it looks like we have two new faces this year. Hello, you two. What will be your names? My name is Izuku. This is Luna, Izuku said. Ah, you two look adorable. Come on, get your hero suits on. We're going to ground beta. Uh, about that, we don't have our hero suits, Izuku said. Ah, just use your gym uniform and use your quirk. 
All Might said. What's your opinion on using rubber bullets? Izuku said. What do you mean by your rubber bullets, young one? Oh, for my quirk to be more efficient, I sort of use weapons, Izuku said. Fair enough, just make sure they're not lethal, All Might said. As All Might grabbed some of the students and ran off to ground Beta, as this is where Izuku would learn his hard lesson to beat up the bully. As Izuku, five minutes later, got him ready and gone to ground Beta, along with the rest of his class, as he would have arrived late with Luna. Izuku, Luna said, as she walked over to him, hugging him tighter. It's all might. Grabbed everybody and drawn lots, just like the original. Didn't just like the original, everyone has the same teams. But instead of Araka, it's Luna. As Izuku would be happy as hell to know that the person in front of him doesn't recognize him yet. And he would be so fucking happy to do so. As, as Bakugo and Ida both went into the building, as they both set up for their big thing. As Izuku and Luna both sat there, putting up a plan. So, you gonna kill him? Nah, I'm just gonna injure him brutally, Izuku said. How brutally? Brutally enough, he ends up being with recovery go for a couple of days, Izuku said. As the fight began, with all might screaming, Ready, set, and go. As All Might said that, Izuku went rushing in at full speed to try his best to get everything done so he didn't have to deal with it at a later date. As Izuku rushed through the halls screaming at Bakugo's name until he finally answered, Dag, Izuku, where are you? Bakugo said in a villainous expression. As Izuku turned the corner as he shot Bakugo in both of his kneecaps, disabling his knees and dislocating him throughout the force of the blast as Izuku would ride this pain out and smash Bakugo, <coughs> Bakugo at the back of the head, leaving him concussed and in a daze. As Izuku was about to land the finishing blow, All Might through the intercom would say Bakugo has been immobilized. As Izuku said, shit, should have gone a little bit less brutal, but hey yo, what are you gonna do about that? As Izuku flipped Bakugo over and made him stare into his eyes to say, how's the quirkless kid fighting back now? Izuku said, remember me, you piece of shit, the one you told to kill myself? Izuku said into Bakugo's earpiece. Not letting anyone hear it but Ida and Luna. Luna being the one who got, well, bullied in the past. She already knew what Izuku was going with and where he was going with it. He wanted to ruin Bakugo's life slowly but surely. But slowly but surely, it will happen. As Izuku met up with Luna in the next two minutes, as All Might announced through the intercom, they had three minutes left remaining. Izuku didn't want to waste any time went up to the top floor and tried to finish Eater off as fast as possible before it ended. One minute passed, Izuku still wasn't able to keep up with Ida, but Luna on the other hand was able to. He used that to his advantage through a samurai sword at Ida's head, missing on purpose to use as a distraction for Luna to take his legs from underneath him and hold him down while Izuku got the bomb helping the hero team win that round. As in the observation room, when everyone arrived back in, as Bakugo was just sitting down after his kneecaps were popped out of place. Young Midoriya, what you did with young Bakugo was unacceptable. How do you think I'm meant to fight, then? Your superhuman attributes, are you not? Yeah, but I have to train to get that. My guns and my weapons help me stabilize it a little bit so I don't accidentally kill him, Izuku said. That's why I use rubber bullets and not real ones, Izuku said, pointing to his weapon of choice. As Izuku and All Might bickered, 
but soon lopsided it as Bakugo was sent to an emergency room. As the class ended, as everything went like normal, Izuku and Luna were just about to leave before Bakugo caught up to them. You. You're Deku, aren't you? Bakugo said. Yeah, what of it? Izuku said. You damn crookless bastard! Bakugo said as he was about to charge for him. Before Ida grabbed him by his scruff, pulled him back and reprimanded him for his actions. As Izuku was about to walk off once more, until a black-haired girl pulled him over and asked him, could they walk home together? As Izuku complied, but Luna did not like that a single bit. As that's where we're going to end the video off, hope you all enjoyed 20 minutes of footage. The next part will be out as soon as you get to 60 likes in 24 hours. You guys managed to get the next last part to that in 24 hours, just barely though. Thank you all for watching and goodbye.